For basically as long as I can remember, I have always loved the 1953 Walt Disney classic, Peter Pan. The reason I'm here today, with my love of Disney parks and the films, and my interest in filmmaking and animation, all stem from Peter Pan. I love learning about how the film was made, how Walt made films about things that meant so much to him personally. As a kid, I always admired his ambition and passion, and as an adult, I yearned for that kind of childhood fun. The feeling that someday I could fly away to Neverland and go on amazing adventures and battle fearsome pirates. Now that I'm older, I know these fantasies are not possible. The golden age of piracy ended centuries ago. A dust that can reverse the effects of gravity cannot exist. Mermaids just don't exist. The closest I can get to that these days is by watching movies and playing video games. As I have stated in one of my previous videos, one of my favorite games these days is Sea of Thieves. And this is where the topic of today's video comes in. I am absolutely delighted to share this with you all. I believe that I may have figured out where Neverland is, and it might actually be in the Sea of Thieves. This may sound absolutely insane. I probably sound like a crazy conspiracy theorist. You're not making any sense at all. You're probably thinking that I've lost my mind. You'd be absolutely correct in that assessment. However, I think I may have actually collected enough strong evidence for this. So I invite you to sit back, relax, grab yourself a mug of hot chocolate, and enjoy. To begin with, I would like to start by looking at Peter Pan and set the groundwork for this theory. In Peter Pan, it is established that Peter is some kind of legend, some kind of bedtime story. Neverland, by extension, would also be a mythical place, a mythical island of unknown properties involving the nature of mortality. Now, there have been plenty of stories through history that bring up worlds where you can stay young forever, or objects that can keep you young and healthy, so this is a very normal legend to exist. For those who need a refresher, the film begins with the two boys of the Darling family, John and Michael, in an imaginary sword duel, recounting the legends of Peter Pan that they were told by their older sister Wendy. After the boys ruin their father's shirt front, Wendy is chastised for telling her brother stories that are immature and cause misbehavior, at least according to their father. George tells Wendy that she'll be spending one more night in the nursery with her brothers, but after that night, she'll be forced to grow up and move out into her own room. After George and his wife leave for the night, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell arrive and search for Peter's shadow in the Darling Nursery. After meeting Wendy, Peter tells her that she'd go with him to Neverland, where kids never grow up. Wendy then brings her brothers, and they all get some pixie dust and learn how to fly with Peter. They all fly off to Neverland soon after. Once they arrive, we are introduced to the sinister Captain Hook, and the kids are soon on the receiving end of cannon fire from Hook's crew. Peter has Tinkerbell lead Wendy into a tropical forest of the island, but Tinkerbell being the vindictive but hilarious little fairy that she is, instructed the Lost Boys to spring a trap on Wendy, but Peter arrives just in time to save her. Peter then sends the Lost Boys off with John and Michael to participate in a side plot that I refuse to bring up, and Peter takes Wendy to visit some mermaids, but the mermaids are kind of... demented. We were only trying to drown her. Peter spots Hook with the kidnapped daughter of the native chief of the island from a subplot that I refuse to cover. But Peter and Wendy go to Skull Rock, and Peter defeats Hook. Later, Hook has his first mate, Mr. Smee, kidnap Tinkerbell, where he tricks her into revealing the location of Pan's hideout. Wendy gets upset with Peter, and Hook captures the darling kids and the lost boys. Hook tries to press gang the kids into joining his crew, but Wendy refuses, and is forced to walk the plank. Peter arrives and saves Wendy, and he battles Hook, and the kids all battle the pirates. The children are successful, and Hook is sent into the distance after being chased by Tick-Tock the Crocodile, and his crew follow him. Peter then has Tinkerbell enchant the ship with pixie dust, so the whole ship flies away and back to London. Wendy wakes up when her parents return home, and she recounts the adventure that she went on, and her parents are very confused, until they see a pirate ship in the sky, causing George to remember his childhood. You know, I have the strangest feeling that I've seen that ship before. A long time ago, when I was very young. George, dear. So now that everyone is caught up, we return to the theory. So from everything I've gathered, we have a tropical island that has dense jungles, multiple inlets, a heavy pirate presence, and is only accessible through some forms of magic, and the island itself is very mountainous. Pair this with an excellent video by the film theorists about Peter Pan, where they made a theory on the location of Neverland. I will leave a link in the description to the original video. I went through the effort of fact-checking the video, and it turns out everything they said about Neverland and where it would be located was true. And this is based on the trajectory the kids flew at while being paired with the geography of London, and even star charts, potentially indicating that the stars in the film the kids fly towards are Mizar and Alcor. Basically, they flew in a southwesterly direction. Southwest from London would take you on a transatlantic voyage to the Caribbean Sea and the Americas. As Neverland is depicted as an island, I'm betting that this is likely in the Caribbean Sea which is filled with island chains, but also was a hotspot for piracy during the Golden Age of Piracy. It also has many mountainous islands such as Tobago, Antigua, and St. Vincent. You want to know a certain little film that was shot there? Yep, Curse the Black Pearl. Just a fun little fact. 
Now, we have a geographical region, somewhere in or near the Caribbean Sea. Cool. Now for the next part of this theory. Where the hell is the Sea of Thieves located? This is actually a far easier question to answer. The Sea of Thieves is located in the Caribbean Sea, specifically between the British Virgin Islands. This is confirmed canon by the game, since it has a map that showcases a far larger view of the Sea of Thieves than the normal maps in the game. We see an island called La Isla Mosquito, which is a real place located in the upper portion of the Virgin Islands archipelago. Meaning, the Sea of Thieves is located somewhere in that region. Within this region, there is a fog that prevents ships from entering or leaving, as it causes wood to rot and metal to rust. The fog is called the Devil's Shroud, and can only be passed through by means of a magical artifact called the Shroudbreaker. If you die inside the Sea of Thieves, your spirit is sent to the Sea of the Damned, and once there, sailors are found by the ferryman of the Damned. He sends those wayward souls back to the world of the living soon after, so long as they've obeyed the pirate code. On top of this, the Sea of Thieves has four main regions, the Shores of Plenty, the Ancient Isles, the Wilds, and the Devil's Roar. Neverland, being a mountainous island with dense foliage and multiple inlets, fits well with the geographical features that are common in the Shores of Plenty and Ancient Isles. On top of that, the Peter Pan's flight ride at the Disney parks includes an active volcano, which fits with this theory, as the Sea of Thieves has some volcanic activity, as seen by the Devil's Roar and the Reaper's Hideout. Now, this is where we get to the juicy bits of lore that I've been dying to get to. In the Pirate's Life Tall Tale series, we saw the inclusion of the Pirates of the Caribbean series into the Sea of Thieves canon. If you'd like a full explanation as to how that works, I'll leave a link down below to my Pirates of the Caribbean and Sea of Thieves timeline video. While you're at it, like this video and subscribe to the channel. It would mean so much if you did. And if you could share it with your friends and loved ones, I'd invite you to Christmas dinner. Thanksgiving is over and I'm looking forward to the next feast I can let out my inner glutton. Hell yeah! Wait, what was I talking about? Oh yeah! Pirates Life Tall Tales. Well, to repeat some of what past me said, there's a group called the Dark Brethren convened and saw the assembly of Duke, the Mass Stranger, the Gold Hoarder, and the infamous interloper Davy Jones, all coming together with a plot to rule the Sea of Thieves. The plan was to have Davy Jones become a new ferryman, forcing all sailors who would normally be revived after death to swear loyalty to the Dark Brethren, as Jones has the ability to make deals that are more than just binding. Where is the chest? If Jones be slain, he who slays him must take his place. Captain, forever. Now, there is one other member of the Dark Brethren that has yet to be mentioned. The one who assembled them all. The Captain. We have never once seen the Captain, but we do see where he sits. His seat at the map table has two major things of note. Firstly, we have the map itself. It has multiple burn marks that are in pairs, like a certain someone's dual cigar pipe, and his left armrest has a ton of scratches on it. Huh. Almost as if he has a hook for a hand. Listen, I'm not saying it was Captain Hook, but it was totally Captain Hook. Now, I would like to recap everything. An island in the Caribbean Sea that is virtually impossible to reach without using some form of magic, that also has properties that alter human mortality, one that also has dense jungles, inlets, and even volcanic activity, an island with frequent pirate activity, and an island that has a pirate that smokes a dual cigar pipe that has a hook for a hand? Now, for the meta side of things. Disney has worked with Rare before. They have an established relationship with the company, and one that seems to be on decently good terms with how much they are able to bring with the Pirate's Life update. I could easily see Disney being like, hey, Rare, we have an upcoming Peter Pan live-action film in the works. Want a collab? The film is set to release sometime in 2023 on Disney+, Plus, so I don't really see an update for Peter Pan being made in such a short span of time. But who knows? Rare and Disney Games are studios with plenty of great and creative people, so maybe they can make something work in a short time span. Now, there's one final note I'd like to touch on. And by note I'd like to touch on, I mean a literal note. Like a note left behind by the captain. In this note, he states that once he hears of the Dark Brethren's victory, he will return. Hook reference aside, we do not know the full context of the word return here, but he could very well be saying that he could return to the Sea of Thieves proper. The Sea of Thieves has plenty of unknown regions to it, lost in the Shroud. So maybe the captain dropped anchor at an island tucked away in the fog, an island that lies beyond the second star to the right, and straight on till morning. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. Production on this one was a labor of love. Peter Pan was a film that I would watch on repeat as a kid, and it cemented my interest in many topics. I grew up with the film, as my parents did before me. To finally be able to battle Captain Hook would be a dream come true. I hope that someday I can play through an adventure in Neverland, just like the boy who would never grow up.
Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. While you're at it, feel free to join my Discord server. It's an active community with over 300 members. Channels to discuss films, shows, video games, and theme parks, along with frequent voice chats. Nearly every night I'm on there. Would you like to get to know me and my friends a bit better? The best place to do that is on my Discord server. I look forward to seeing you there. That's it for today, and I wish you all have a great day.